The purpose of this video tutorial is to show you how we can use loops to solve difficult problems or problems that would be impossible to do by ourselves. For example, statistics says the chances of us flipping a coin 20 times and it landing on heads all 20 times is less than one in a million. Well, it would take quite a long time to test something like that with a real coin, right? But a standard computer is capable of performing billions of tasks per second. In fact, right now the world's fastest computer is capable of doing something like 17 quadrillion operations per second. And unlike a human, computers don't get tired and slow down or complain. So, using a computer, we're going to simulate a coin flip 20 million times and find out if the statisticians are correct. That should be pretty easy to do, right? Okay, so first thing, let's create a new project in this one, and let's name it coin flip. And you can save it wherever you need it to be. And I'm going to click finish. I'm going to get rid of all of the comments because of course I don't need them. All right, all right, let's make it bigger. Okay, the first thing I want to do is set up something that will randomly say heads or tails every time I run the program. So the first thing we need to do is figure out how to use randomness in Java. So it's pretty easy. I'm just going to write the code here and show you what it does. OK, so this line of code right here that I just wrote is going to give me a random number, either a 0 or a 1. And it's going to save that value in the variable rand. And let me explain exactly how that works. So the first thing that happens is this code right here gets evaluated, and it will give me a number between 0 and 1. That could be a 0.11, it could be a 0.762, it could be a 0.999, or it could even be a 0. So it'll be something between a 0 and a 1. It's a decimal value. And then I'm multiplying it by the number 2. So that means now the possible values for this number are somewhere between 0 and 2. Because if it was a 0 0.2, now it's a 0 0.4. Or if it was a 0 0.8, now it's a 1.6. So in any case, it's going to be between a 0 and a 2, but it will never reach 2. The lowest possible value this could be is a 0 still. And the highest possible value it could be is a 1.9999999999 something forever, right? Well, by putting the word int in front of it in parentheses, we're changing it to be an integer. It's called casting. We're changing it to be a new data type. And when we do that, it loses its decimal value. So if it was a 0 point something something something, now it's just a 0. And if it was a 1 point something something something, now it's just a 1. So the possible values are 0 and 1. Okay, so I know that rand either equals a 0 or a 1. So now I'm going to use an if statement to check. I'm going to say if rand equals 0, say heads. And then I'm going to say else if rand equals 1, say tails. Okay, so let's just run this and see what happens. It says tails. If we run it again, it says heads. Again, heads. Again, heads. Head, tails. Heads. Tails. So as you can see, it just chooses a random heads or tails every time. So starting now, I'm going to run this program 20 times, and we're going to see how many times it lands on heads. Okay. So we got heads 11 times after flipping the coin 20 times. So that seems pretty close to reality, right? You've got a 50% chance of it landing on heads or tails, so in 20 times, about half of them, it should land on heads. Now, of course, I could do this a million times and see if the statistics are correct, but I don't really want to do that. That's going to take forever, right? Well, let's speed up the process. 
let's put a loop around this that will run it 20 times and count how many of them it lands on heads for us. Because that was kind of hard for me to do myself. So I'm just going to put a loop around all of this. I'm going to say for int i equals 0 and while i is less than 20, increase i by 1 every time and put all of the code that I want to repeat 20 times inside the brackets. Okay, so now that's all going to happen 20 times, but I need to set up a counter to figure out how many times heads occurs. So let's create a counter variable. So heads counter equals zero to start out with. And any time this is true, this is going to display, right? So when that happens, we want it to also increase the heads counter. Okay, then at the very end, let's just display what heads counter equals. All right, let's run it. Okay, so let's make this bigger. And it says tails, tails, heads. Tails, tails, heads, heads, tails, heads, heads, tails, tails, heads, tails, heads, tails, heads, tails, 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 tails. So it only landed on heads eight times. So let's get rid of the displaying and just see the final result. So if we turn off this code, now it's only going to do the counting, and in the end it'll display how many times it landed on heads. So let's rerun that. It said 10 times. So remember, if it ever says it landed on heads 20 times, that's that one in a million chance we're looking for, right? Because the chances of it landing on heads 20 times out of 20 is less than one in a million. So that's going to take forever if I really wanted to keep going and see if I ever get a 20. So one way we could speed that up, of course, is just to create another loop. We can put another loop around the loop we already have. So I'm going to say for int j equals 0 while j is less than 1 million increase j by 1 every time and put everything inside of that loop. Okay. And if I run it right now you'll notice that it's not very useful. See it's just kind of going too fast for us to even tell whether it ever equals 20. Because it's just going on and on and on and on. So this is going to take a long time just because the displaying takes a long time. But the computing doesn't take very long at all. So this part that displays the times that it landed on heads, let's say only display that if the value equals 20. Okay, all right, let's run that again. And in a million tries, we actually got it to land on heads 20 times out of 20, twice. So that's kind of an anomaly. If we were to do it again, it only happened once. We did it again, it happened once. And that time, it didn't happen at all, right? So the statistic seems to be correct. That's about one in a million times it'll happen. This time it didn't happen at all either. This time it only happened once. This time it didn't happen at all. Okay, so it looks like the statisticians are correct. So I'm going to shrink this a little bit so we can see all the code. Now I want to change things up a little bit. I want to make it so instead of using a for loop and going a set number of times, let's use a while loop and we'll just go until it lands on heads 20 times in a row. So let's change the condition to be while heads counter does not equal 20, okay? And it doesn't like this because heads counter was a variable we created inside the while loop. So let's actually take it out here, create it above the while loop, and then let's initialize it to be zero each time the while loop repeats. Okay, so now it'll be checking the value of heads counter and it says if that value doesn't equal 20, we get to repeat everything in here. And it's going to keep going until that value equals 20. And in order for us to figure out how many times it takes, 
let's set up another counter. Let's say int tries equals zero. And then inside of the while loop, every time the while loop repeats, we're going to increase that value by one. Then we don't actually need this part. And then after the while loop, let's just display the message. It took tries. Tries before we flipped heads 20 times in a row. Okay, and let's run this. And it says, it took 224,920 tries before we flipped heads 20 times in a row. Let's run it again. This time it took 1,106,307 tries before we got 20 times in a row. This time it took 1.6 million tries. This time it took 651,000 tries. This time it took 1.4 million tries. So that's another way to illustrate that the probability the statisticians came up with is correct. There is, in fact, less than one in a million chance that you can flip a coin 20 times and it will land on heads all 20 times. Okay, so hopefully that helps you as you begin working on your war card game assignment because you'll be using a while loop just like we did here to keep the game going until one player has all of the cards.